If you need a new smartphone that doesn't suck, but your budget is tighter than a Haddix ring piece, then one manufacturer you should definitely consider is Realme. Like its massive rival Xiaomi, Realme likes to pump out solid smartphones at a nice price, and its freshest budget handset for 2021 is this bad boy here, the Realme 8 Pro. And this boasts some very impressive specs indeed, including an AMOLED display and a 108 megapixel rear camera to take on Xiaomi's very own Redmi Note 10 Pro. Now I've been using the Realme 8 Pro as my full-time smartphone, so here is my in-depth review. And for more on the latest to greatest tech, including roundups of the best budget smartphones in 2021, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now the Realme 8 Pro ain't exactly compact at 6.4 inches, but it's certainly not as big as some other recent budget blowers, and it is reasonably light as well at just 176 grams. And the design is fairly typical for a budget smartphone around this price point. The Realme 8 Pro is wrapped in a plastic frame which stretches from the edges all the way around the back and it's got a lovely textured finish as well to aid grip and prevent any nasty greasy finger scuffs. Oh and just in case you didn't notice it, there's also a fairly sizeable slogan branded across that arse, exactly the kind of thing that you wouldn't shout at someone stood precariously at the edge of a cliff. It's definitely a very bold move by Realme and one that could well potentially put off a lot of uh, consumers as well but at the very least it's a conversation piece when we all start meeting up in pubs again. You've got two main colour choices with the Realme 8 Pro, Infinite Blue or this here Infinite Black model which sounds pretty morbid for sure. But don't worry, you shouldn't find yourself staring into that infinite black surfacing and pondering the very fragile nature of our existence. At least I didn't unless I started hitting the scotch pretty hard. And apparently there will also be a fluorescent yellow version of the Realme 8 Pro available in some regions as well, which sounds utterly batch but it should be a bit brighter and happier at least. And yeah, because the Realme 8 Pro is constructed from plastic, you can expect scuffs and scratches to build up over time, although touch wood, after a few days, it's still looking pretty fresh. You do get a condom case bundled in the box, which is always handy, and this thing has already slammed down onto a hard bathroom floor, and touch wood emerged absolutely unscathed. Huzzah! And it's more good news when you actually boot the phone up as well, because the Realme 8 Pro sports the latest Android 11 OS, plus that all new and improved Realme UI 2.0. This is still effectively Colour OS by a slightly different name, and while it certainly has its foibles, like that absolute cluster of a settings menu, there's still plenty of stuff to love here too. Realme UI is certainly easier to customise than stock Android, with a personalisation section that gives you full control over the icons, fonts, menu colours and other bits. And forget that bog standard dark mode, because here you've got three grades of darkness, and there's an always on display feature to take advantage of that OLED screen. You've got some nifty gesture control in there, including the bit of raise to wake action, all the usual shenanigans, and a very much appreciated one handed mode as well when I can actually get it to work. Huzzah, huzzah drinks all round. And sure, Realme UI can be a bit janky in places, the animations aren't always super smooth, which can give the illusion the performance isn't quite as good as it actually is, but overall I'd say that the benefits outweigh the drawbacks. And all of the other features that I expected from a budgety smartphone were present and correct, including dual SIM support, plus a separate microSD slot to expand that generous 128 gigs of storage. And yeah, you've got NFC on here with full Google Pay support for your contactless payments, very, very helpful certainly these days. You also have an in-display fingerprint sensor to authorise payments and to unlock the phone, and unfortunately it's not the best example of an in-screen scanner that I've used. Overall, it tends to work all right, but occasionally it'll just take sort of two or three attempts to actually recognize your print and unlock the smartphone, which can get quite frustrating. I even removed the uh, on-screen protector, which came pre-installed just to see if that was, you know, balking it in any way. Doesn't seem to have improved it at all. But fortunately, the Realme 8 Pro also sports some very dependable face recognition, which works a hell of a lot better. Combined with Raise to Wake, the Realme 8 Pro pretty much unlocks as soon as you pick the phone up, which means you can then get on with admiring that pretty 6.4 inch Super AMOLED screen. It's still pretty rare to see an OLED screen on a budget smartphone around this sort of price point, although last year's Realme 7 Pro did break that trend with the OLED screen, and of course Xiaomi's Redmi Note 10 Pro, very impressive budget handset recently came out with an OLED display as well. The Realme 8 Pro is certainly a feast for the eyes with its sharp contrast, reasonably punchy colours and wide viewing angles. It's not the brightest screen around, but I didn't struggle to see outdoors, and the Full HD Plus resolution certainly keeps movies and photos looking super sharp. The Xiaomi phone does beat the Realme 8 Pro when it comes to the refresh rate, however, because the Redmi Note 10 Pro sported a 120Hz refresh, whereas here on the Realme, it's just a bog-standard 60Hz panel. 
While the Realme 8 Pro only sports a mono speaker setup as well instead of a stereo speaker setup, at least it's pretty bloody loud once you bump it up to the maximum volume. And I have absolutely no issues with the Bluetooth 5 connectivity as well, connected to headphones, speakers, nice strong stable connection throughout, no issues, no judders. Plus you also get a headphone jack, way. And if you've got a pair of phones that support high res audio, well, so does the Realme 8 Pro, so good times all around. Now like last year's Realme 7 Pro, you once again have Qualcomm's Snapdragon 720G chipset running the show, and it's a definite shame that the specs haven't been boosted for this fresher model. Still, you've got a pretty generous 6 or 8 gigs of DDR4 RAM in backup, and everyday shenanigans were fine and dandy on this 8 gig model. I did see some slowdown in the transitions when zipping through the UI and such forth, but I think that's more down to the launcher than the actual performance. And certainly no worries if you want to relax by supplying random online strangers with a dozen new orifices courtesy of an M15 machine gun. Games like Call of Duty Mobile play beautifully even on those higher graphic settings, helped by the responsive 180Hz touch sampling, while Realme UI's comprehensive gaming mode also offers up all of the usual tools including resource management and notification blocking to give you that competitive edge. You've got a 4,500 milliamp battery crammed into this plastic chassis and certainly that did the job absolutely fine, even on the longest days with plenty of camera use, media stream and all that good stuff. With around 5-6 to six hours of screen on time, I usually still had around sort of 20-25% battery left at the end of the day. I don't know why I'm speaking like this. You got support for that 50 watt super dart charge tech as well, so you get a full charge in under an hour, even from a completely drained battery. And you actually get a 65 watt power adapter bundled in the box as well, which is exceedingly generous for a budget smartphone, especially when some smartphone manufacturers can't be bothered to bundle any charger with their overpriced blowers. So Realme is making a big deal about the camera tech here on the 8 Pro, notably that 108 megapixel Samsung H2 sensor. And like Xiaomi's 108 megapixel optics on the Redmi Note 10 Pro, this uses 9 in 1 pixel binning just to help give you slightly brighter, more balanced looking shots. So what you end up with is 12 megapixel pics that are still detailed enough to enjoy on a monitor or a telly. You can swap to a 108 megapixel mode if you want more detail, but the colour reproduction clearly suffers as a result. Now most of my test photos on that 12 megapixel auto mode came out well. You will see some slight oversaturation in bright conditions, and subjects who aren't particularly fond of pausing do occasionally come out of it blurry, just the usual budget foibles. For darker scenes, you can at least switch to night mode, which helps to brighten up the shot. It's not exactly a miracle worker, but it does the job. And for a different viewpoint, you can always swap to that 8 megapixel ultra wide angle lens. This obviously does not come with the benefit of that pixel binning, so you will notice that images can be a little bit murkier, colours don't look quite as natural, and overall it's not quite as great, but it's always an option. You've also got a macro lens on here, which is fine if you want to shoot something from a distance of a couple of centimetres, plus a monochrome portrait lens that helps to produce some rather tasty results for your human subjects. You've got a variety of effects and filters to choose between, including the ability to drain the colour from the rest of the photo. Very funky. You'll find a similar selection of filters and fun modes when you swap to shoot and video, including a bokeh feature that works alright, but leaves a fuzzy kind of halo around your subject. And more colour highlighting options as well. Though bear in mind you'll have to shoot at low resolution to activate these. On the other hand, your standard 4K footage will look good. No problems here with focus, though the audio pickup is definitely a little weak unless you're actually right next to the phone. And last up, flip it around to the front and you've got a 16 megapixel selfie cam that's your typical basic budget shooter, complete with the usual portrait smarts and all of that jazz. And that right there is my full review of the Realme 8 Pro, and while it doesn't quite baste my turkey in the same lovely way that the Xiaomi Redmi Note 10 Pro did, it's certainly a solid budget smartphone in every regard. I would have liked to have seen an upgrade to that Snapdragon platform, and unfortunately the display can't quite match the Redmi Note 10 Pro either, despite the fact it is a rather luscious bit of OLED action. Oh, and if you've got the Realme 7 Pro, don't concern yourself with upgrading because it is just a minor step up. So that's my thoughts anyway on the Realme 8 Pro. It'd be great to hear what you guys think down in the comments below and please do check out my roundups of the other uh, budget smartphones you can grab right now in the UK in 2021 including that Redmi Note 10 Pro which I can't stop gushing about apologies and for more on the latest greatest tech please do pause subscribe and ding that notifications bell and have yourselves a fantastic rest of the week cheers everyone love you